Hi, it's Jess here from nigessa.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you the tutorial for the project I made for the Ink Stamp Share blog hop. And the theme was tree decoration. So I made, I made this. Um, I was delighted to have the excuse to have a go at this. I first saw this um, quite a few years ago. Um, Sam from Mixed Up Crafts shared it and I thought, oh, that looks amazing, but I bet it's really hard. And I finally got round to making it and realising actually it's not too hard. Um, I've made this, it's mint macaron and this lovely paper is from the um, Ornate Garden um, DSP. Um, and um, so you might not necessarily think Christmas when you look at that, but I did. And um, I've added um, some uh, foiled paper to go on these little bits. And I think that just adds a little bit of extra. She left hers plain, but I quite like that. And I've just added a little tag so it could be um, a little gift. And um, that little tag is from this die set, the uh, Little Treats. Um, box die set there's so many elements in that that it, it you know could use it for many 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 things I love that circle and that tag is just perfect for finishing off this little um, tree decoration or you could give it as a gift box it does open you can seal it up um, but I also added um, one of these to the tops just to finish off but this is done so that it opens up So your ribbon goes through the four tucks, but you could, I say you could close it, but you know, what an amazing little gift box. And um, that goes there. And I'm not sure, I haven't got one to try, but I did wonder if a chocolate orange would go in there. Might do, might try that out. So that is, that is it. And you simply um, wind the, poke the ribbon back through but I'll show you when I do uh, the one I'm making today so we're changing the colours up today and we're going for pretty peacock I adore pretty peacock and um, I've already cut my little bits up and this is from brightly gleaming this is the I, I didn't have much of it left and I thought oh have I got enough and actually I did because you you cut 18 18 one inch by one inch squares so you actually only need a three by six piece that's what I had when well, I had slightly more than three by six and um, so if you imagine you've got six that way three that way three six is 18 that's all you need to do it so if you're working in six by six paper then you just need half a sheet it's fabulous and then I cut um, some eight one inch squares in our copper foil as well because this is copper foil in and then I've cut my little tag and then I thought oh ribbon I haven't got any pretty peacock I could colour some white but then I thought oh actually the um cinnamon cider ribbon would actually go really well so going for that you could actually do this probably in cinnamon cider as well that might look nice didn't it just suddenly thought of that Let's just see what that looks like. So bring in some cinnamon cider. Yeah, that would have probably looked quite nice, actually. Cinnamon cider and copper. And actually, you could have probably, instead of that, done the pretty peacock. Oh, do you know, cooking on gas might, um, might do another. Not that I've got enough of that foiling to do another with anyway, but maybe I could beg steel and borrow six by three inch of one of these off a mate. Right, let's get started. Now I have made a template um, with all the, the scoring on. Um, so I will put a picture of that on my blog and I will put all the measurements on my blog so you can just sort of sit back and enjoy watching the process and not worrying about um, measurements right now and let's see how easy it is. So we've got 10 and a half by six and a quarter and we are scoring at one and a quarter so all the intervals are one and a quarter so we go one and a quarter two and a half three and three quarters 
five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, and ten. And then we rotate it round, and again, we're doing every one and a quarter. So, one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and five. And then I'm doing it slightly different to the way that sort of Sam explained this, uh, because I've since made um, another bauble in a similar style, just taller, and this was a much easier way of doing the next section. So we are going to draw a score line down just to this first um, horizontal score line. So we're going to go at five eighths, draw it down and stop at that score line. Then we're going to go to three and one eighth. And then five and five eighths. eight and one eighth so basically every other square you're just scoring a line down the midpoint which is five eighths then we want to do the same at this so we want to flip it not turn it otherwise you'll be doing it in the wrong squares so we go again at five eighths at three and one eighth at five and five and five eighths that's my numer numeric dyslexic coming out there eight and one eighth okay and then keep our stylus put our scoreboard away bring in a ruler and what we want to do is draw a diagonal line from the square below what we've just scored in from the corner to that point and that point and we're going to make triangles as you can see from my you can see where i flipped it so that's what we're doing so you need something soft i've got a pad here you could use if you've got a stamp mat you could even use the Stamping Up catalogue. I was on Zoom last night <laughs> with my niece. She wanted to make some Christmas cards. She wanted some inspiration. She wanted to use the uh, Snowflake Wishes and she needed some inspiration. And I went, well, just look in the catalogue. There's loads of cards in the catalogue. And she's like, I don't know where it is. And I'm like, oh my goodness me. My Stamping Up catalogue is like, well, it's never far from me. It's in handy reach of my desk. I have I have it on my phone in iBooks. It's on my Mac. So it means if I'm waiting in a queue or more to the point, if I'm waiting outside a shop whilst Dave goes in a shop because I don't tend to go in the shops, um, I can just... Um, Browse the catalogue, get some inspiration, get some ideas, maybe do a sneaky bit of shopping. And um, yeah, so I'm like, how can you have lost it? But I suppose it's not everybody's priority, is it? But it is man. So there we go. Just get those done. Like so. That's the that's all the scoring done. So now we're just going to um, fold and burnish all of those score lines, and then we'll do a little bit of snipping. So, oop, I've just. You won't have noticed, and I haven't tried my hands very well. I've just taken the post off the postman. And so I had to then go and wash my hands because I handled the post. 
didn't quite dry it properly never mind it'll be fine so yeah ed's in a meeting in the dining room and i heard the knock and uh, i could hear that he was on a zoom meeting i thought oh i'm gonna have to run downstairs and get that but it's the last of my son's birthday presents his birthday was wednesday it's now friday but he's not getting them anywhere till monday because he doesn't live locally so there we are so we're doing that and then what we're going to do is cut out these end two rectangles and then every square that's got a score line down the middle so i'm going to use my nice big scissors for that so Go down the school line and then I just notch that a little bit. Do it all the way along, all the vertical lines first. That's the easiest way. And I like to cut it so that the school line is got rid of on the bit that I'm keeping. So I hope you can see that. So then we'll just cut that off. Cut that off. Can't quite reach. There we go. I'll probably keep those. Get little small punches in that. And then we do the same on this side. Do like to fold those bits down so I'm not in danger of cutting the wrong one. There we go. So you end up with that. Okay, and then we're going to stick our squares on. So these ones go on all the flat squares, ignoring the top row. So they go on each of these. And this is the bit that's slightly time consuming. Now, if you've got a one inch square punch, these are really easy to do. I thought I had a one inch square punch. It appears that I don't. My one inch square punch is a scalloped square. I bought a set of nesting ones, oh gosh, years ago. Um, so all I did was cut, I say I had a six by three piece and I cut it three one inch strips and then went along it as an inch. Right, I'm going to save, I seem to have, oh yeah, I've missed those. Mm -mm. I was going to say, I've got too many. So, and then I've got two, one for the top, one for the bottom, but I'm not going to put those on yet because I don't know which one's going to be the top and which one's going to be the bottom just yet. Okay, so I'm going to use Tombow to glue those on. So I'll speed it up whilst I'm doing that.
So that's them all stuck down. And so now we're just going to um, fold along these triangular score lines. You could do this before you stick the, um, the squares on. Certainly want to do it before we do our next bit. But folding these score lines sort of makes everything come together really, really well. So I've enjoyed making Christmas baubles. So this is my third and I've got another one up my sleeve. Well, not my sleeve, I'm not wearing any, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, who knows, I might, might make some more before Christmas. So who's got their tree up already? I know lots of people are putting them up early this year. Cheer themselves up. Last year we did put ours up, last day of November, only because we were going away for the next two weekends. And if we hadn't have done that, it wouldn't have been up till like Christmas Eve. So got them all folded. Now I want to do our... Our... Um, our squares, right? So I'm going to use my grid mat to help me here. Um, you can use a ruler, but the grid mat's great because all I want to do is mark the centre point of one of the squares, one end of the square. So I just want to mark where the centre point of that is on each of them. And done. I had come up with this was when I made my first one out of mint macaron. I thought, oh, I probably wanted a nice mat around that in in gold. So I cut the square gold square in gold to mat, and I'd cut them wrong, and um, I'd cut them as an inch. And so rather than waste it. I thought, oh, what else can I do with these inch squares? And that's when I came up with this idea. And um, and I liked it. And so I didn't mat, but I suppose you could if you wanted to. You could mat it. So these are an inch square. You could go an inch, an inch and a quarter. Well, no, you'd have to go less than an inch and a quarter because that's the same width as the thingy, isn't it? But yes, you could do that. Now, if you wanted to, you could now draw from that corner to that point. And that's your cut lines. Or if you're like me and a bit lazy, you can just use your scissors so going from the point to where I've marked it. Cut them like that. And then what you've got is one to go in that middle triangle and then one each side. You could just put the middle triangle in. Um, but I quite like it with the reflection. It's not perfect. But it's good enough. And when it's like all folded, you'd never really notice if it's not quite perfect. It's you, the uniqueness of something that's handmade. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that. But Ed sometimes has far too much fun in his meetings. I've just heard him proper laugh there. Oh, managed to get a bit of glue on there which you don't really want on there. On the foil sheets, but it'll be fine. And then that one on 
there. So that's what you do along all of them. Okay, so I'll show you this without the pencil line. Literally do that. Okay, so I'm going to finish those off, but I'll do it quickly because you get bored, won't you? So that's those bits all done. So now we need holes in one end. So basically where the holes is, is going to be the top. So if you've got a preference over which is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom, now is the time to make it. And you want to make a hole in the centre. Now you can do it two ways. You can take one of those bits that you um, cut away and you've got a score line down there so you can just fold it in half the other way and there you've got the center point and then you need a hole punch in the middle now I've got a copper dial and I'm going to use the eighth of an inch one I've got it set there to five eighths which is the center point to sort of help me to to find it and then you can use that as a template or you could on the back draw draw across because you're not going to see it because it's on the inside and that gives you the centre point there and you can then use that. It is quite hard to see on a dark cardstock, but then that's one way of getting the, the centre. So I prefer that to the template because you know the template and it can slip. So I think in Sam's video, she marked the halfway and drew across that way but i thought well if you just join the two diagonals you get the center so uh, that's uh, that's the way i decided to do it and it is if it is quite important to get these center marks um as accurate as possible because that's what's going to fold on top of each other and form the closure and if they're slightly out your closure won't look quite so neat so that's them done you could use a pokey tool if you don't have a hole puncher but you're going to thread ribbon through it so you want it to be wide enough to be able to thread your ribbon so you could eyeball this as well if you're confident in your eyeballing okay so that's that so on my template that's why i've got those those dots and um and why i drew those on the other side okay so now let's start putting it together so we need glue down here so I'm going to use a bit of fast fuse for that side bit for quickness. So that would just connect quite nicely on there. I'd recommend a strong glue, especially if you're going to um, I'm going to use wet glue now, especially if you're going to um, put little gifts in it. So now you're going to 
connect the opposites together. So we'll put a bit of glue on there. So you can use tear and tape, red liner tape, stamp and seal plus if you've got it. I like my liquid glue because I get a little bit of wigglage. You get a little bit of time. Stamp and seal plus and fast fuse. It's like when it's stuck, it's stuck. So we'll help that a little bit. Folding. Should have gone back round and made sure with these diamonds that they're well and truly burnished again. That's the bit with the um, where I stuck it down. Should have. So that's my mistake. Don't make that. Is is to re-crease that bit where you stick the two together because obviously the bit that you've stuck on hasn't creased. So that's, that's that sorted. There we go. Show me who's boss. So I'm just gonna put a bit of glue on there. Just stick that one down too. And on there. Stick that down. And then I'm going to get one of my two squares that I had left over and stick that on the bottom because if it's on a tree, it might be high up so you can see the bottom. So you want it, you want it finished off. And then you can take your bone folder and give that a good burnish. And you can see that's quite large in there. You get quite a lot in there. Right, so now to close this up, we need, um, we need to do two things. We need to put a hole in the middle of that if we're putting this on the top bit and I I think that finishes it off nicely so I'm gonna find the center point like so I could have actually stuck this on before I did the hole but I didn't so there we have it and uh, gonna go in there where the hole is I might move this to half an inch just so my accuracy is better there we go so kind of decide which is going to be the last one over not that it really matters and uh, stick that stick that to there just think it finishes it nicely having one on the top as well. So you could have stuck this down before. So there we go. Not quite centered. Be fine. So now we need our ribbon. So I'm using our cinnamon cider about 10 inches is what i used and you knot it at the bottom it's a lovely ribbon this it's really soft got quite a sheen to it so it um I think it works really well with this uh, copper foiling. It was a nice little afterthought that. So that should now hold in. So 
will go through that one. You can rub out your pencil lines if you want to. I'm going to get my scoring tool to help me poke it through. And then put it through the opposite. And obviously this is when you'd put any treats in it that you were planning on putting in. And you can see if you've done it quite accurately, that will fall quite nicely. And then we go through this one. And then you leave the one that you've decorated to last. And then we'll put that through there. And there we have it. And then just as a little finishing touch, I have my little um, little tag where you could write a little message. You could heat and boss a little message on there. A little to you, a little tiny Merry Christmas. And that is, that is my little bauble. And that's the mint macaron one which let me close it up and then you can decide which you like best anyway so i've closed that up and then i thought oh, it would be nice to have a little message and i remembered in festive post we have a really really small merry christmas there's also an enjoy the season going for merry christmas so i thought it'd be worth stamping that so i just did that with some gold heat embossing and um I'm going to add it to this one as well. Put a little Merry Christmas across there. Fits lovely on that little tag. Useful to know. Uh, I've got a bit of copper powder. I don't think we sell this anymore. Much of fact, I'm sure we don't. Um, but I've got it. I haven't got much of it left, to be fair. And I think that will finish that off beautifully. I love the copper. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, look at me. I have like copper, gold and another shade of brass, that's it, on my Christmas tree. So these will go lovely. And that's it finished how gorgeous is that i'm really pleased with how these turned out i really think adding the foil is worth it for for the impact and i love how that pretty peacock one's turned out i mean i loved this one and now i love that one they are going to look smashing and i'll probably make some more out of the other foil dsp that I've got. Love it. Which do you like best? <sighs> Difficult to choose. Okay, so all the details and the template and everything will be over on my blog, nigesa.co.uk. Be a link down below. I'll link to the original blog hop as well, so you can go and see the tree decorations that everybody else has made. I can't wait because I just love making my own Christmas decks. I just think it adds a little something extra special. And then every year when you get them out, you remember, oh, yeah, I made that last year. I really liked it or five years ago or whatever. So and they go nicely with the homemade, um, the school made um, things that, that my kids made when they were little and they're not little anymore. Uh, so, yeah, hope you like that. And uh, if you wish to buy anything, there'll be links to my shop down below as well. And over on the blog, there'll be listed all the items and you click on them and it'll take you straight to my shop for ease. Okay, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.